I think whether Agenda 2030 actually gains traction in life beyond something that's been agreed to uh, in a multilateral forum that feels very far away from people's daily life and daily existence depends on the actions that are taken to translate Agenda 2030 into something that people feel they have a sense of agency about. It's not something that you're outsourcing to your government to do on their own. Um, it's really about the daily interactions that human beings have with each other and how they want to connect with each other and how Agenda 2030 and the SDGs actually create the space for a different way of being with our natural environment, a different way of being with each other and for a different world. Well, I think the Riavaya project in Johannesburg was a particularly interesting opportunity to work on a project that really, as you've indicated, addressed multiple challenges. So at the time, Johannesburg's growth and development strategy had a number of these indicators, issues of environment, issues of economy, issues of spatial transformation, um, and, and so on and so forth, emissions. Um, I, I think that the issue was really in setting a process in place uh, that allowed particularly our partners in the minibus taxi sector to in many ways walk that road and craft that path together with us. Uh, for many of them it was literally life-threatening. Um, it meant giving up something they were very accustomed to for something that they didn't know. Um, and a big part of, of that journey was actually the power of human connection, um, the power of learning through other contexts, so things like study tours, uh, exposure to other contexts where this had been done before and then localizing it for Johannesburg conditions and circumstances uh, was all part of it. So I think the issue often, uh, again, even at local government level or at any sphere of government for that matter, is when things like Sustainable Development Goals and Agenda 2030 are seen as something on paper that require you to tick a box and say, I've accomplished this. Or is it something that you internalize for the individuals in the institution, for an institution itself, that becomes your way of being? And often that means that you're challenging an existing norm of how an organization functions. It means having to break the rules of how institutions are set up. It means running the risk of adverse audit opinions because you've done things in ways that are not textbook related. Do we have the courage to step up in our, as individuals in our institutions uh, so that in fact we understand that our collective future is going to be determined by the choices we make now and if we keep doing what we've always done then we're likely to go down the same trajectory. I think courage is particularly important and of course if you look at the root word of where the word courage comes from it's the ability to follow your heart and so often I think we get lost in the political correctness of the language. Uh, things like silent time, reflective spaces for leaders, reconnection with the natural environment, really get you plugged in in ways to the connection you need to make to your own heart to tell you what it is that you're needing to do as a leader.